Hi, my name is Elizabeth Sutton. I am one of the head decorators here at Amanda Oakleaf Cakes. I really enjoy uh, working here and being a cake decorator, and more specifically, um, cupcake decorator. You can come visit us at our storefront. It's at 1 Pauline Street in Winthrop, Massachusetts. And you can also visit our website at oakleafcakes.com. And today I'm going to be talking to you about cupcake decorating. Choosing a frosting is something that can be very fun. I like to pair up flavors uh, that are complementary to each other. I usually tell people, you know, with like a yellow cake or a white cake, um, pretty much anything goes because the flavor is something so subtle that you can really pair it with just about anything. Um, in my personal opinion, I think that fruit flavors go really well with the yellow cake and the white cake, you know, flavors such as raspberry or strawberry. And with chocolate, um, and flavors similar to chocolate, such as hazelnut, the cake itself is so rich that I usually like to pair it with another rich flavor. You can get away with it. Um, something like peanut butter or chocolate fudge, um, even cream cheese works really nicely with flavors such as chocolate. When you're trying to choose a frosting, I would say to always keep in mind that you're trying to cater to your audience. So what I tell people when they're choosing a frosting for kids, kids usually like it simple and sweet. So, um, you know, yellow cupcake with vanilla frosting usually works over pretty well, such as chocolate. Chocolate works pretty well too, you know. Just the simple flavors, kids really like that. I wouldn't recommend people choosing an off-the-wall flavor for kids, they tend to not really enjoy that. But if you're catering to adults, you know, a wedding or a baby shower, I suggest people go all out, try something you've never had before. Um, blueberry is a really popular frosting flavor in the summer, it's one of my favorites. It pairs really well with a yellow cake or a white cake, but um, always keep in mind that you're trying to cater to the audience that you're feeding. So some of the basic tools of cupcake decorating, um, it really depends on what kind of cupcake that you want to make. If you're going to do a traditional buttercream cupcake, a um, good place to start would be a piping bag. Um, this is a good sized piping bag, it holds a lot of frosting. So what you want to do is you want to fit it with a piping tip. This is a traditional round tip, you just insert it in the piping bag and voila, you just fill it with frosting and this would make a traditional swirl. We also have another popular tip to use, would be the star tip and that makes um, kind of a more fancy ruffly swirl. If you're gonna color the frosting, we recommend using um, gel paste food coloring as opposed to traditional food coloring because it's more concentrated, it will last longer, and you need to use less of it. So we really recommend using the gel. If you're gonna be using fondant to decorate your cupcakes, there are some more tools you might wanna use. Um, right here, we have a small little fondant roller. Um, it's really handy because it's tiny. Um, this is a pastry uh, cutter. It's like a pizza cutter. Um, one side is a straight edge and one side is more of a ruffly edge. Um, it's good, you can use it to make lattice pattern on top of your cupcakes, it's really pretty. Some other tools you might want to consider are miniature cookie cutters. Um, we like to use these just to brighten up kind of a plain cupcake. You know, you can cut out a little flower or a star, stick it on top of the cupcake, it makes it ten times more fancy. And if you want to get really creative, um, we have these edible food markers. It's just a regular marker with edible food coloring inside of it. So. You can draw on the fondant, you can write people's names, um, people really enjoy it and they're really easy to use. To start this frosting, the first thing you're going to want to do is make a vanilla Italian meringue buttercream base. We are going to take a quarter cup of water and pour it into the boiler along with one and one fourth cup of sugar. It seems like a lot of sugar, but believe me, it's enough. So to measure the temperature of the sugar water, we're going to use a candy thermometer and we want that to get up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Just watch it, it takes a little while. When the sugar starts to bubble and get thick, that's probably a good time to check it because it should be about 250 at that point. Now while that's going on, you want to pour eight large egg whites, and it comes out to about a cup, into your stand mixer, along with one teaspoon of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar helps to stabilize the egg whites, helps them whip up really nice. So you want to let that go until soft peaks form. Now that soft peaks have formed in the egg whites, we're going to add a third cup of sugar. I usually keep it uh, separate next to the bowl so that I don't forget because it's really easy to forget to add it. It sweetens the meringue so it makes it, you know, taste a lot better. While that's going on, you want to check your syrup. So now that our syrup has reached 250 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to turn our stand mixer down to very slow because you don't want this to splash up at you and you're going to pour it in, making careful not to hit the bowl or the whisk or else the sugar will harden instantly and then you will get lumps of sugar syrup in your frosting. You want to let everything mix in and then turn your syrup back up to a medium-high level. 
Okay, so the bowl feels about room temperature. It's been about seven minutes, and now it's time to add the butter. So you wanna turn it back up to a low speed. For this, we're gonna be using six sticks or a pound and a half of butter. And you wanna add the butter in slow increments, about two tablespoons at a time. You want the butter to be soft but not melted. So once you've added all the butter, you wanna turn the meringue back up to a pretty high speed. You wanna let everything incorporate, about two minutes. All right, so once your mixture looks light and fluffy, you wanna take the last step, which would be to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. We use the real stuff. I wouldn't recommend using imitation vanilla extract unless it's a necessity. And then you're gonna turn it back on to incorporate. So, now that we have our Italian meringue base, we are going to be adding coffee to it. You're going to wanna to boil three tablespoons of water. I know it's a silly amount, but it's all it needs. Once the water comes to a boil, we're going to be adding a quarter cup of instant coffee. You can shut the boiler off, and you just want to whisk it until it's incorporated. We're going to turn the Italian meringue on low on the stand mixer, and slowly add the coffee mix. We're going to want to turn the stand mixer back up to high until all the coffee is incorporated. And once the coffee is incorporated, it's a nice uh, light brown coffee color. And once it holds up on the spatula without moving, you know it's done. To start this frosting, the first thing you're going to want to do is make a vanilla Italian meringue buttercream base. We are going to take a quarter cup of water and pour it into the boiler along with one and one fourth cup of sugar. It seems like a lot of sugar, but believe me, it's enough. So to measure the temperature of the sugar water, we're going to use a candy thermometer and we want that to get up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Just watch it, it takes a little while. When the sugar starts to bubble and get thick, that's probably a good time to check it because it should be about 250 at that point. Now while that's going on, you want to pour eight large egg whites, and it comes out to about a cup, into your stand mixer, along with one teaspoon of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar helps to stabilize the egg whites, helps them whip up really nice. So you want to let that go until soft peaks form. Now that soft peaks have formed in the egg whites, we're going to add a third cup of sugar. I usually keep it uh, separate next to the bowl so that I don't forget, because it's really easy to forget to add it. It sweetens the meringue, so it makes it, you know, taste a lot better. While that's going on, you want to check your syrup. So now that our syrup has reached 250 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to turn our stand mixer down to very slow, because you don't want this to splash up at you and you're gonna pour it in, making careful not to hit the bowl or the whisk, or else the sugar will harden instantly, and then you will get lumps of sugar syrup in your frosting. You wanna let everything mix in, and then turn your syrup back up to a medium-high level. Okay, so the bowl feels about room temperature. It's been about seven minutes, and now it's time to add the butter. So you wanna turn it back up to a low speed. For this, we're gonna be using six sticks or a pound and a half of butter. And you want to add the butter in slow increments, about two tablespoons at a time. You want the butter to be soft but not melted. So once you've added all the butter, you want to turn the meringue back up to a pretty high speed. You want to let everything incorporate, about two minutes. All right, so once your mixture looks light and fluffy, you want to take the last step, which would be to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. We use the real stuff. I wouldn't recommend using imitation vanilla extract unless it's a necessity. And then you're gonna turn it back on to incorporate. So now that we have our Italian meringue base, we are going to be flavoring it with lemon curd to make lemon Italian meringue buttercream. So this requires a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of the lemon curd. You can just drop it right into the mixing bowl. You just wanna turn it up to medium high. So now that we have added the lemon curd, uh, one more optional step is to add a bit of lemon yellow food gel. And this gives it a nice light yellow color. You can add as much or as little as you want. Turn it back on, mix it to incorporate. Once it's all incorporated, you have a nice light yellow lemon buttercream. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make vanilla Italian meringue buttercream. To start that, we are going to take a quarter cup of water and pour it into the boiler along with one and one fourth cup of sugar. It seems like a lot of sugar, but believe me, it's enough. 
So to measure the temperature of the sugar water, we're going to use a candy thermometer. And we want that to get up to about 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Just watch it, it takes a little while. When the sugar starts to bubble and get thick, that's probably a good time to check it because it should be about 250 at that point. Now while that's going on, you want to pour eight large egg whites, and it comes out to about a cup, into your stand mixer, along with one teaspoon of cream of tartar. The cream of tartar helps to stabilize the egg whites, helps them whip up really nice. So you wanna let that go until soft peaks form. Now that soft peaks have formed in the egg whites, we're gonna add a third cup of sugar. I usually keep it uh, separate next to the bowl so that I don't forget because it's really easy to forget to add it. It sweetens the meringue, so it makes it, you know, taste a lot better. While that's going on, you want to check your syrup. So now that our syrup has reached 250 degrees Fahrenheit, we're going to turn our stand mixer down to very slow because you don't want this to splash up at you. And you're going to pour it in, making careful not to hit the bowl or the whisk or else the sugar will harden instantly and then you will get lumps of sugar syrup in your frosting. You want to let everything mix in and then turn your syrup back up to a medium high level. Okay, so the bowl feels about room temperature. It's been about seven minutes and now it's time to add the butter. So you want to turn it back up to a low speed. For this, we're going to be using six sticks or a pound and a half of butter. And you want to add the butter in slow increments, about two tablespoons at a time. You want the butter to be soft but not melted. So once you've added all the butter, you want to turn the meringue back up to a pretty high speed. You want to let everything incorporate, about two minutes. Alright, so once your mixture looks light and fluffy, you want to take the last step, which would be to add a tablespoon of vanilla extract. We use the real stuff. I wouldn't recommend using imitation vanilla extract unless it's a necessity. And then you're going to turn it back on to incorporate. And once that's done, that's it. That's how you make Italian meringue buttercream.